Thanks, Chris. I am joined by Indian Valley head football coach Matt Lancaster. First of all, coach, congratulations on the win last week against Indian Creek, thirty-five uh, nothing. Big win for you guys. Uh, some unfortunate circumstances have happened this week. Uh, fill us in, fill the Big Z Sports listeners in on what's going on in the world of Indian Valley football this week. Uh, well, thanks, Joe. And, yeah, we're proud of the way the kids played, but as you said, uh, uh, you know, uh, we got some bad news uh, leading in early this week. So, I'll just give you a rundown on. Uh, the story on Tuesday morning, we were we were contacted. Myself, uh, the head coach at Indian Creek, contacted me. Their athletic con- director contacted ours, and just to give us a heads up that uh, they had a, a a coach that tested positive for COVID. So at that point, we weren't thinking uh, too big of a deal. Uh, coach hadn't come into contact with anybody. We shouldn't uh, have to worry about anything, anything looking at anything, or uh, you know anything like that. And then they also said they have a player who's being tested and they'll let us know as soon as that, uh, you know, test comes back. So about three o'clock in the afternoon, um, they, they called and said, uh, the, the, t- the player tested positive. So I, I got with our, our, our athletic director, our superintendent, and we started to get to work on, uh, you know, uh, looking at the film and, and seeing, uh, you know, we asked him what number he was, who was he, so we could, we could verify where he was on film. And then, you know, based on CDC guidelines that we've been told, uh, we're in place all year long. Uh, otherwise, I don't know how we would have started a football season period uh, of the 15 minutes of uh, cumulative contact, you know. So uh, we started looking. We, we actually watched the film three different times and went through and documented each player uh, that touched him, how long they touched him for, uh, you know, how many times they touched him. And then uh, I went through that with my athletic director. Athletic director went through that with the uh, superintendent. We did this all ahead of time, getting our work uh, ready to give to the health department so they could look at it and uh, you know make it make an informed decision uh, about where to move how to how to move forward from there. So uh, by Wednesday afternoon, after we'd done all that, our uh, athletic or athletic director and um, superintendent uh, asked the health department if they wanted to see anything. They they did not need to see any film. Uh, so they we said, well, what do we need to do? And they said, you need to quarantine any kid that touched them. So unfortunately, we got kids that you know. Uh, touched them for a total of two seconds that uh, are quarantined. They, they don't get to go to school. Uh, they don't get to see their friends. They don't, obviously their playoff run has ended. And, uh, you know, the, the kid that touched them the most was a, was a total of 40 seconds, uh, way below the 15 minute uh, CDC guidelines. So we, we asked, you know, what, what, what's, what's different about that? And the uh, Tuscarawas County Health Department said football is, is different. A touching football is, is somehow different. Um, and that's just frustrating because I, I, we can't find where that says, you know, that in the CDC guidelines. Um, we know for a fact that uh, uh, other area counties haven't handled this in this way. Uh, you know, uh, West Holmes freshman played Dover's freshman and Dover had a kid test positive uh, after playing. And um, West Holmes Health Department said nobody needs to shut down. And, you know, their, their whole team's still playing because uh, they didn't accumulate 15 minutes of contact with the kids. So. It's just the frustrating the amount of to see the amount of effort you know that that the health department put into making this decision that's going to affect not only our team and our school but 16 kids' lives. Uh, you know that the, the amount of effort. They, as a matter of fact, um, they didn't even verify if the kid from Indian Creek actually tested positive. Uh, didn't even check on that. And we asked them why not. They said some health departments just don't communicate with each other, and that, that's shocking to me that we're willing to shut down kids' lives and make decisions like this. And hypothetically, not that they did this, but Indian Creek could have just made it up, you know, that that there was no actual test. And as a matter of fact, uh, the health department didn't check and verify that until this morning, you know, uh, a a number of days later, and did verify that there was a positive test. So it's just frustrating feel bad for the kids. You know, it it is what it is, and it's it's the world we live in, but uh, uh, it's unfortunate. Well, Coach, uh, what's uh, what, what? What could possibly be the next step for Indian Valley? Uh, can they go up the line to the ODH and the Ohio Health Department or the OHSA? What can Indian Valley do to maybe uh, get this injunction, or is it a final decision already? Yeah, you know, we've 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 exhausted all options at this point. Uh, the parents are, are are all the parents of the kids who've been quarantined. My, my own wife, two of the kids on on the team that are quarantined, are my own two sons. You know, and so we 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 went through every option possible. Um, legal options uh, might work, but they take too long. The legal system just doesn't work that quick to affect the, the game that's supposed to be played tomorrow night or even probably affect their quarantine to at least get them back in their 
in their classes. You know, um, we, we've contacted the Ohio Department of, of Health as well. And, and while they yesterday uh, said that uh, they didn't think this was the right decision, it was up to our local uh, health department and any complaints have to go, you know, towards them. So it, it, that, and that's what that's that's what's frustrating is, is the power, you know, that they have over this. And there's no recourse, uh, you know, to get it changed and to reevaluate the situation and say, hey, maybe this was a rash decision. Uh, maybe you do want to look at the film and, and, and see before we make these decisions, because we're making decisions that affect, you know, it seems like they're, they're making the easy decision that really have impacts on kids' lives. I know my own son takes AP calculus, uh, physics, all college credit plus classes, and now he's got to try to teach himself that stuff at home and get help every now and then with a, with a teacher on a computer. All because he tackled the kid one time. He was in contact with this kid for three seconds. You know, and I, I just think at some point, at some point, we need to look and reevaluate, you know, the – are we sheep going along with this blindly? Uh, when you look at kids my son's age have a 99.997% survival rate. And, you know, it, this is, uh, and we don't, uh, don't get me wrong, Joe. We don't, we don't want to spread this any further. Sure. We don't want to, we don't want to get this out there, you know, but, but the, the amount of effort that was put into deciding to quarantine, I guess is, is what's frustrating. And that the guidelines that were put forth by OHSAA, by the CDC themselves, you know, we're not followed. And, and that, 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 that's what's frustrating, I guess. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, you don't have to mention names or anything, Coach, and I, or, and I don't know if you can even confirm or deny this, but could you – could you has any Indian Valley players tested positive since last Saturday? No. No. Hey, have Nobody, t- and have no, tests and no been one allowed has, to have no, been no, taken? No one, no one has signs or symptoms. And we, we, we went through this with the health department, too. We asked, you know, hey, can we just take these 16 kids – and get them tested, and they said no. They still have to be quarantined uh, because of some, some viral load uh, might not be strong enough to show. It might show a negative test. And we said, well, what about after eight days? Can we take – forget about the football game. You know, get these kids back to living normal lives sure. at, at least. Can we take them back in eight days and get them tested? They said, nope. Once, once, you're, once, you're, once you're, you know, identified and have to be quarantined, you're that no matter what, no matter how many tests you go and you get taken. And the other thing, you know, the health department, when they called the parents that night, they gave the blanket, you know, my, my wife said, well, why is my son being quarantined? And they said, well, it's because he was in contact with someone for 15 accumulative minutes that tested positive. And that's just not right. That's not the <laughs> you know? truth, so, though. You know? uh, the, the misinformation, the miscommunication is frustrating, not following CDC guidelines. And here our kids are, 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 are sitting at home. Uh, you know, we're out of the playoffs. Uh it's just the decisions that affect more, more than just a game on a field. You know, it's 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 the kids' education. It's their it's their social and emotional well being, uh, and it's just living. You know, sure. and and at some point, you know, I I, I don't want to get political here, but um, you know, it, this is just frustrating and and really makes you think when you went through the process and you saw the amount of effort that was put in to deciding to quarantine this many kids and end a football season, take them out of school, affect their families' lives, affect, uh, you know, their lives, it, it, it was shocking to me. Absolutely. Well, Coach, uh, I know uh, I, I know you take the time out of your busy day to join us and to talk about this frustration uh, down in Janaden with the Indian Valley Braves, and, and I know it's not going to get easier knowing that uh, you guys should be playing tomorrow night down at Bloom Carroll, but, uh, you know, we're behind you, we support you, and uh, it's been a pleasure covering you in the playoffs, and uh, hopefully uh, here in a couple weeks uh, we'll get to see you back out on the field uh, for a couple games to finish up your season. Yeah, I really appreciate you having me on, Joe. You know, uh, our kids are resilient. We're we're excited to get back after this is all said and done, and uh, our kids kids will be excited to get back and, and and hopefully we'll get to finish off the season with the with a few football games and at least get our seniors a, a full season. So do you have yeah? Do you have a schedule that uh, that you have in place maybe uh, here in a couple of weeks, or are you still deciding we're, on that? We're work we're working on it right now. We know we have John Glenn okay. uh, the week we come back, and then uh, we're working on filling out the uh, the final week. You know, after that. Well, Coach, uh, be strong for your kids, be strong for your family, and uh, we appreciate you more than you know. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe.